Thanks for this opportunity to share our research on the association between the extent of PrEP uptake in states in the United States and changes in population level HIV diagnoses. My co-authors are included here. So PrEP was approved for use in 2012, uh, and its goal is to reduce the risk of HIV acquisition for people who are at risk for acquiring HIV. And since that time, PrEP's use has increased steadily through 2022, with nearly 364,000 PrEP users by 2022. In 2018, we worked with the late and wonderful Don Smith to examine the ecological associations of PrEP uptake in US states and trends in new HIV diagnoses through 2017. And at that time, we found a significant dose response relationship between state level PrEP prescriptions and new HIV diagnoses. We know that the impact of PrEP use on reducing new infections might be modified by the extent to which the people who are taking PrEP are really those who need it most. In other words, we're we getting PrEP to people who are at high risk for acquiring HIV. But this relationship can also be confounded by things like parallel HIV prevention interventions uh, and treatment interventions in these same populations. So we use state-specific prescriptions for PrEP uh, that were derived from commercial pharmacy data and a validated algorithm for PrEP indications. All of the data used in this analysis are publicly available. Um, we use data from AIDSU.org for PrEP users and viral suppression levels and new HIV diagnoses, and CDC uh, publicly available data on people with PrEP indications. We define PrEP coverage essentially as the proportion of people with indication for PrEP who had a prescription. And our primary outcome was the estimated annual percent change, or EAPC, we calculate this using joint point trend analysis methods developed by the National Cancer Institute here because we wanted to also control for jurisdiction specific viral load. We implemented these methods through PROC Glimix. And what we present is the mean PrEP coverage by PrEP quintile of states, the overall EAPC in the US uh, in terms of HIV diagnoses from 2012 to 2021, um, and then that same EAPC metric within quintiles of PrEP coverage. And we tested for trend across the quintiles of PrEP coverage among the states. So let's see what this looks like. Here we have sort of the three players in this analysis. The light blue line indicates the increasing number of PrEP users that I mentioned earlier. Um, so starting in 2012 through 2021, a very steep increase. The dark blue line on the bottom is a slowly declining trend in HIV diagnoses um, on a smaller scale, but a slow but steady decline. And then the yellow line here is viral suppression. Um, since 2017, when data are available, the extent of viral suppression in US states has gone slowly up. So I show this because this is why we need to um, use proc glimmicks, because we have two things on this graph that really favor decreases in new HIV diagnoses. PrEP going up, that should favor lower HIV diagnoses, but also viral suppression going up. We know that people who are living with HIV and who are virally suppressed are incapable of transmitting HIV. So we, we would expect that with more viral suppression, there will be fewer new diagnoses. These are the mean PrEP coverage levels by PrEP quintile of use in 50 states. So in this highest quintile, uh, in the 10 states in this quintile, the average over all those years, remember there was this inclining um, you know, trend in PrEP use, but averaged across all those years, the states with the highest PrEP use had about 16% coverage. And in contrast, the states with the lowest 10, uh, low, lowest 10 states uh, in terms of their levels of PrEP use had an average of less than 6% coverage during the period. When we compare the trend in new HIV diagnoses by these state quintiles, uh, we see this really um, classic dose response relationship, where in the 10 states that had the highest levels of PrEP coverage, those states experienced about an 8% decrease uh, in HIV diagnoses per year over the period. In contrast, 
in the areas, uh, 10 areas that had the lowest levels of PrEP use, those states saw about a 1.7% uh, increase or estimated annual percent change year to year in HIV diagnoses. This was a significant trend, um, meaning that there is kind of a dose response relationship between how much PrEP is used in a set of states and the extent of declines in new HIV diagnoses. We know that there are multiple factors that influence changes in HIV diagnoses. And I mentioned that we can actually controlled for confounding uh, for viral suppression, but we couldn't control completely for, for example, other prevention programs or HIV testing patterns. We also know that there is risk heterogeneity in PrEP users and the extent to which PrEP uh, actually lowers HIV transmission depends on whether we're getting PrEP to those who are at highest risk for HIV. Is that PrEP use equitable? And we've recently quantified this uh, as the PrEP to need ratio. We know that ecological associations don't prove causation. However, that dose response relationship that we saw in the stair, sort of stair stepping of the decreases in HIV diagnoses is the kind of relationship we look for when we're considering whether a relationship might be causal. And finally, we know that changes in HIV testing during the COVID pandemic affected the 2020 and 2021 new diagnoses. Nonetheless, jurisdictions with higher levels of PrEP coverage experienced larger declines in new HIV diagnoses, even after accounting for jurisdiction-specific viral suppression data. So there is this dose response relationship between PrEP coverage and the magnitude of declines in HIV diagnoses that we can't assert as causal, but that meets at least that sort of dose response criterion for causality. We know that combined approaches to HIV pre prevention, timely diagnosis, effective treatments, also play critical roles in realizing reductions in new HIV transmissions. And we also know that in addition to PrEP and referral programs and HIV testing, that Medicaid expansion and PrEP drug assistance programs have been found to be associated with higher equity in PrEP use. Remember, high, higher equity in PrEP use means we're getting PrEP to the people most likely to benefit, and we're likely to maximize our public health benefit when we do that. Um, so we encourage states that have not yet considered Medicaid expansion or PrEP drug, drug assistance programs to consider them now. This work was funded by the National Institutes of Health and AIDSU. The source of PrEP data resources is supported by a grant from Gilead Sciences. Thank you.